So good morning. Um, my name is Amia Seligman. And for my project, I did a comparison of French and American education systems to try to better understand what education means to these two nations, to these two societies, and also what education means in general. Um, so I have spent the last four years at Newton North, and I worked, and I ha spent the last two months at L'Ecole Messiaen, which was, is a French high school in Paris. Um, and that was my, those were my two comparison comparisons. Um, so my focus, um, the focus of my research were what, what are the manifest and latent goals of each education system, of each high school. And I also looked at comparing the structures of each system and the results that I found, the differences between the goals and the structures um, are all a result of the cultural differences between the two um, countries and the two schools. So for my um, for my research, I primarily did lots and lots and lots and lots of interviews um, in both high schools. And I also used my personal experience um, as well as outside research. So, um, so as I said, I've spent the last four years at Newton North High School. Um, Newton North, I think you all know pretty well, but just a recap, it's a public high school. Um, in 1827, Massachusetts was the first state to require public education. And in 1859, North Newton High was um, built. Uh, so in mass, in a very important characteristic of United States education is that there's no national curriculum, which means that every state has a mandate of, over its public education. Um, so I spent the last two months at Le Cormacion, which is in the 4e arrondissement, and it is a semi-private public, semi -private public school. It's called a, uh, sous contrat de l'État, which means that it's under contract with the state. Um, this is because it's part of what is called l'Oratoire de France, which was created in 1611 by a group of priests. Um, and so it's part of this religious community, um, but it also follows state, state mandates, and it doesn't um, impose any religious affiliations on its students at all. Um, students of all affiliations and religions can um, can come to this school. So that is the Cormacion. Um, so I began my research with looking and trying to understand what are the goals of teachers? Um, what are the manifest goals of teachers of each school? And what I found, I thought was very interesting. Um, in both schools, in two different countries, the manifest goals of teachers were exactly the same. So, and it was, actually frightening how like the, the words they used were exactly the same. So they talked about um, giving students the tools and the freedom to continue to learn, um, igniting a passion and curiosity in students. They talked about the importance of academic rigor, teaching material, but also um, moral values, so something on a human level. And they also talked about how education is the pathway to end inequalities towards an equal society. And then most importantly, both teachers in both schools um, define success similarly. They said that self is a self-defined, success, excuse me, is a self-defined measure. So that was interesting. Um, when I asked students what their goals were, um, it was, I asked them two questions. I asked them what are their personal goals and what do they think the goal of the institution is? Um, students at Newton North um, responded that the goal of an average student is to get into college, and a good college, right? Um, whereas at Massino, they talked more about, students talked more about living together, pursuing a, um, a society that will, uh, pursuing career paths that they love and bettering society. So you can see kind of an opposite there. Um, but when I asked students at Massillon, what do you think the goal of the institution Massillon is? They said, it's just to push us to get good grades so that the school will have a good reputation. However, when I asked Newton North students, what's the goal of Newton North? They overwhelmingly said, it's to help us m build a happy and balanced life. So you can see how it's not, it's an um, opposite mirror of each other. These two responses are very similar and these two responses are basically the same. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, so in this presentation, I hope to explain um, how the differences in these responses, as well as the different structures of the school, are all, a result, are all results of the cultural disparities between 
the two schools and the two nations. Um, so I would like to introduce you to Professor Geert Hofsted, who I became very close with in this process. Just kidding. <laughs> I just read a lot of his work. Um, he <laughs> He um, is what is a Dutch psychologist who did one of the most important studies on culture across nations. Um, and he defines culture as a collective programming of the mind that distinguishes one group from another. Um, in his work, he divides culture into different dimensions. Um, so to better explain what is culture. And I use two of these dimensions um, in my work. And the first is power relations or power distances. And he defines this as the emotional distance within a hierarchical system. Um, and what he also does is he creates a spectrum. And on the spectrum, he kind of qualifies and quantifies each nation, saying, and what he does is he says, um, the United States is a nation that has um, very insignificant power distances, whereas France is a nation that has very strong um, power relations, very strong power distances. There's um, a larger, to say there's a larger distance within the hierarchical system than in the United States. And then the other um, uh, dimension that I looked at and I used in my research was individualism versus collectivism. And again, he, um, he categorizes the United States as one of the most individualist nations and France as a much more um, collective communal nation. Um, so I'll first talk about power relations and how I saw this power, this dimension manifested in the school. Um, so this was actually the, sing the, the single most um, important difference that I saw between my, my, my experiences in both school were the differences in the relationships between teachers and students. Um, so at Newton North, I think there is a very strong sentiment and a lot of emphasis placed on building meaningful connections with teachers and students. Um, students are encouraged to debate in class, to have conversations, to argue, to question, to meet outside with teachers, to build strong relationships. And that's not necessarily the case at Messiaen. Um, in fact, teachers are at Messiaen are only paid to come into their classes to come into their classes, which means that they go home, they're expected to go home for their grading and preparing in classes. And furthermore, there's actually no space. Teachers don't have offices, and there's like a very small um, uh, like room for teachers to meet. So there's really no time or place to meet outside of the classroom. And I think in that way, I saw how the system um, is almost preserving these strong authoritative powers. Um, there's also little conversation in class. Uh, one class that I took was a philosophy class, and uh, we sat for two hours, and the professor dictated, and we wrote down what they said. And it's a philosophy class, and the students, we were expected to be tested on exactly the words that she said um, the next week. So that was very different. Um, I think another part, another way you see another manifestation of this dimension um, is the grading and the encouragement. So at Newton North, and I think in America in general, there's a lot of great inflation, um, and there's a lot of encouragement in, for, for students. Um, and you don't see that in the French system. You see very tough grading and little encouragement, and the idea behind that being that too much encouragement won't make you want to work harder. So um, I was talking to, I was, when I was interviewing a French professor, um, he told me a story actually of when he was grading an exam with his American colleague. And they received an exam, and it was a stellar exam with a stellar student. And the American professor proceeded to give the student 20 out of 20. And the French professor said, are you crazy? We don't give 20 out of 20. And he gave him a 16 out of 20. And it was a perfect exam. So it's this mentality that's different. And I think that's part of, it stems from this power distance. Um, but again, if we look back, so I put this quote down, which is a quote from a French professor, and I think it shows how um, the, the ideology is really the same. Like when I talked about the manifest goals of teachers, their, their goals and their ideologies are the same, it's just the way that it's different. So both, both schools and both teachers want to um, treat everybody as an individual and give individual attention, but it's just manifested very differently. 
Um, okay, so the second dimension was individualism versus collectivism. And I'll first talk about Messiaen and the French system. And I think you see the collective nature of French society and um, most, m most um, prominently in the standardization of the school and the education system. So in France, you have um, two major exams, because it's a national curriculum, right? You have two major exams that every student must pass, uh, le baccalauréat and le brevet. And um, so le bac is a, um, it's an exam you take your two last years of high school, and it basically determines where you can go after college. And if you can, it, sorry, where you can go after high school, excuse me. Um, and you can, if you don't pass it, then you don't get to move on to higher education. Um, and the, the brevet is a exam that you take in, in sixième, which is um, fourth grade. And it's, again, partly to funnel students into different paths. Um, because there's this idea in France that at every moment, um, every, like, at, at around the same time of the year, every third grader should be reading the same book. So to, and it, behind this idea of standardization is this idea that everybody should be equal. And I think that stems from collectivism. Um, you can also see this in the uniformity of the system. So when I was in class, I was not prepared. <laughs> I had the wrong pens, the wrong notebook. Um, I didn't have, I was used to typing all my essays, but you have to use, you have to use the right color for a certain letter. You have to use um, margins, like perfectly spaced margins. So there's a uniformity. And I think, again, that stems from this desire to have an equal, to create equality, and that's the collectivism. Um, and then when you look at individualism in the United States system in Newton North, I think you see it two ways. First, you see it in the way Newton North treats every individual as giving everybody the opportunity to pursue their own path. Um, there's a general school, there's also a vocational school. As you all know, there's countless opportunities for students, um, electives, clubs, theaters, uh, theater, the sports. Um, there's um, the, the credit system allows students to really maneuver their high school experience and decide what courses they want to take. And in that way, um, every student is really seen as an individual. But I think as a result, there's a huge culture of stress and competition. So every student and teacher that I interviewed talked about this anxiety that they feel at Newton North and the stress and the competition, especially students talked about competition between their colleagues, their, their friends. Um, and I think that stems from being an individual and seeing yourself as an individual in the school. Um, so kind of as a side question, um, I think that right now in America, education is going through a lot of changes. And I just wanted to touch upon that a little bit. Um, so I, I think I, I also talk to a lot of teachers at Newton North who have been here for the past 10, 15, 20 years and who talked a lot about how they've been feeling um, the increasing standardization that the country has been going through. So if we look at um, the No Child Left Behind Act 2001, um, Governor Salucci's um, Governor Suu Kyi and the Education Reform Act in 1993 and the creation of the MCAS, um, the debates over the Common Core right now, you see a lot, you see a trend moving towards standardization in this hope to create equality. So um, just kind of a side question. So this is actually an image of students taking the back and they take it in huge rooms and it's this, it's really, it's really like a standardization. You see students taking the same thing at the same time. And I guess my question, a side question was, does standardization actually create equality? Um, or does it just do away with creativity? And a lot of teachers had, I, used, I, I wish I had more time because I talked a lot about it in my paper, but a lot of teachers um, had a lot to say about that um, at Newton North. Um, so I said that I would explain how the different responses of the students um, were reflections of the cultural dimensions that Hofstede talks about. And I think you can see how the, student, the Newton North student response is a very individual response, um, whereas the Messiaen response, um, living in a community, pursuing their desires to create a better society, is a very communal and collective response. Um, and then also, when you look at, um, oh, here I'll go. <laughs> when you look at 
how the students at Messiaen blamed the, their higher, their authoritative power. They said that um, they, they blamed the power for the stress and the anxiety. You can see that it's because the authoritative power is much farther away. And at Newton North, students were much more reluctant to place blame, I think because, that was my hypothesis, that because there were much more closer relations. Um, okay, so I also wanted to talk about diversity in both school. And though it's not, it's as though it's like a tangential kind of piece of the, my presentation, my project, I think it's still really important to talk about. Um, because diversity reflects the goal of each school, to um, define success differently and to offer different opportunities. So, Massillon is... That's ridiculous. Like, no, the student needs to work harder to catch up to the people. He's behind, and that's why we berate him. That's why we publicly kind of, like, call him out and say, you're not working hard enough. So, I wonder, like, did you notice in France a culture of... Spe like, uh, is there a specialized education system in France? Do they have ex support programs to help them catch up? are falling behind or do the tracks that you kind of create with the test that the kids take in fourth grade, does that pretty much lock them in? Um, so you, so the tests, you can't switch out of your stream, um, but, and there is a lot of yelling at students and, or it's, it's a very tough grading system and um, I think, I, I asked a lot about like special education um, and whether there was anything like that, because I know it, like at New North, it's a big part of our community. Um, and they don't have any special education, usually in, at Messiaen, in some schools they do. Um, but that, it's, that's part of the result of the fact that it's a private school. Um, so they have, when I asked about um, um, dis disabilities, they talked about um, having uh, students who are dyslexic or um, dis 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 dysgraphic dysgraphic um, in classes, but there, there is no um, specialized attention. And that's what I thought was so interesting that they, for them, it is a special attention, but for us it's not. So teachers, both teachers in both schools really feel that they are giving individual attention, but just when I see it, when we look at it, it doesn't look like they're giving any individual attention, but for them, they are. So for them, it is the norm. Um, Yeah, so it's not, I mean, there is, <laughs> they write, there isn't, I mean, it really depends. Some teachers yell, some teachers don't. Um, they write notes to, they write notes to their students, but not a lot. It's, so I guess the, it's really, I think, after my time, I, I was, I was trying to understand, so what is this individual attention? Because it's not what we do here. Um, and I think it's really treating students with respect and, um, believing, like just like we do here, believing that every student can succeed and it's this idea that they really do think that every student can succeed and want to treat students with respect, it's just different. And that's, and I think that's the result of the power distances. That's my argument. And we're going to stress the student perspective on the, stre the stress issue at uh, Massimo. Um, the student Yeah, so I think students, well, one major difference is that I think what creates a lot of stress at Newton North and in the American system is that really the first time you're put in a category you're met, is the college application system. And in France, students are used to taking four hour long exams um, and being, cat being funneled um, and being processed. So I think in some ways that might alleviate the stress because I think here that's really, that's a stressful um, situation. Um, but there is this kind of, uh, among students there is this kind of uh, very cool, we're not stressed at all, we work hard but we're not stressed. And there, I mean, there is a lot of stress, especially in a school um, like this, where it's a lot of high-achieving parents who push their kids a lot. And I think, just as at Newton North, um, a lot of people that I interviewed talked about stress coming from the community. I think the stress comes from um, the, the community, there, the families there as well. But it's just hidden. It's just like a hidden nature. But there, I really didn't see any competition. 
And I think that's because there is like little competition. There's no like hiding, looking, feeling bad, comparing yourself to other people. Yeah, because there's this feeling of because it's because it's this feeling of like collectivism, like we are a student body and that's the authoritative power. And it's this authoritative power is maybe just we may like him, we may not like him or her. Um, but we are it's like this really collective feeling as a student body. I don't know, like as a personal experience, the best way I can imagine it is I remember in one of my classes sophomore year, um, we had a, a very, very difficult teacher and she left for um, 10 minutes um, while we were taking a quiz and every student in the class decided that they were going to take the quiz together. And it was this, it was, so we all cheated, which isn't like at all just or like moral, but it was this, I, I didn't feel guilty at the end and I, I, like, I think cheating is wrong, but I didn't feel guilty at the end because we were all doing it together and we decided that we wanted to do it together um, and everybody helped each other. So it's kind of, I think like, that's the most similar thing I can think of, that like, they really feel, yeah. So does that seem then that the kids in the class, the student body, when that child is berated in front of his peers or her peers, they all kind of rally around and say, we're going to get you there? Like, do they, is there that kind of sense of community? Um, there's no, so it's, I don't know if you mean like, do they all stand up and say, you're wrong, the teacher. Not to the teacher, oh. I mean, do they, do they individually then kind of recognize that, wow, one of our own who's supposed to be kind of like on the par with all of us is falling behind, so do, do students take more responsibility in kind of like helping sweep the student forward and move the student forward? Um, I think it's more that everybody just kind of lets it slide and it's not in, that, it's not um, as, like, where, sorry, so I took classes, I mostly took classes in my year, so in like the last year of high school, but I also sat in on lots of classes um, for younger students as well, and I went to um, classes for younger students, and I think that's where most of the shouting and berating comes from, and it's just kind of, it, they shake it off, it's not, there isn't a lot of importance that comes to it. Students don't really cry or they don't seem to feel bad. Um, but. I wonder if it's, sorry, I just wanted to make a comment. It, I wonder if it's a little like coaching. You know, it makes me think of my college basketball coach who was so mean and, and yelled at us and berated us and but you know it didn't it's, it, it bothered us, but it just, you know, made us work harder and try to be better. It sounds like a lot like a, a tough coach yeah. should be to a to a team. And so I think there is, there's like that aspect too. And then there are also teachers who don't yell and who, but still maintain formalities, um, who are very kind and, and, and um, but it's, it's still a very formal relationship. Um, yeah. I'm curious about the stress piece too, because I mean, the, the, it seems like, you know, preparing for the Bach is like kind of inherently stressful. Um, and I'm wondering, Sort of what happens with those kids who aren't successful, um, and you know how that kind of plays into the stress as they're preparing for it. So I think um, I would have been really interested to see that at different schools, where maybe not all students pass the back, but at Messiaen, because it is this elite institution, it's a given that people. Um, uh, but there is, I mean, there is a lot of stress, but. Um, like so I was living with a family and I actually did the French exchange two years ago and I stayed with the same family because um, it's the same school and he I mean he, I, I understand that it's different for different people but he was totally relaxed before he took these big exams and it was stress but it's really this hidden like nonchalance um, and when I was talking to people as well it's they're nervous but they're I mean he took a exam to go into these elite institutions um, in a room with, um, there is a big, um, uh, uh, what is that word? It, it's also difficult for me to sometimes talk about it because everything happened in French, so I lose the words. I don't know. I found that that was really hard. Um, um, it's a, a train station. <laughs> in a train station, and there were um, 5,872 
students taking the same exam um, at the same time. And so there were, there were, and because there were like 2,000 people um, administering the exam, it was just in this huge, and he, I would have been so nervous, <laughs> you know, and I think because they're used to taking these exams, um, there is stress, but it's a different, it's a different kind of anxiety.